often on this channel we talk about some of the coolest ways that you can score a goal in Rocket League. Things like flip resets and flip resets and flip resets. And yeah, these things are cool, but they do require an insane amount of practice and even still, after all of this time that you may put into practicing high level Rocket League shots, you'll never be able to make those things as effective as the fundamentals of Rocket League. And the fundamentals, just like in any real sport, are the key to actually winning games. If you do stick to these things, you will win a lot of games, and that's really what you want, isn't it? The fundamental skill that we're going to be talking about today is probably the most important and the most effective move in the game when executed properly. You've already read the title, so I'm not going to act like you don't know what we're going to talk about. Of course, we're talking about passing, specifically the eight most effective passes that you can do in Rocket League. Before we get into the video though, I do want to quickly mention something that you guys can check out if you're interested. A lot of you have already done so. Basically, this is my Rocket League course on Gamers Ready, the Rocket League Mechanics Master Course. This is a course where I go through everything from power shots to flip resets to things like wave dashing and stalling and air roll shots. I mean, it's basically meant to take you through all of the mechanics that you can do in Rocket League and show you how to do them and how to improve at them. So if you guys wanna check that course out, I've put a link in the description below and you can use code FLOOP when you check out to get 30% off. So check that out, link in the description just to make it easy for you. If you've already bought the course, which I know a lot of you have, thanks so much for doing that and hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, maybe give it a try. Now, before we get into the specific eight effective passes that we're talking about that are sort of effective in modern Rocket League, I do want to also give a shout out to early passing that I'm guessing a lot of you did when Rocket League was either still in its early stages or when you were in the early stages of your game. And this is basically just using the corners and looping the ball around in front of the net. And in any lobby above gold, I don't think this really works anymore. Even lower player ranks have gotten good at just jumping up and saving it or predicting that. But in those really early ranks of Rocket League, it's really awesome to be able to do this. This is kind of like the main passing skill. But yeah, it's pretty cool to see the way that passing has evolved over the years in Rocket League from simply pushing the ball around the corner to the things we see today in RLCS and in high level lobbies that we're going to look at in this video. All right, so the first one, and this is probably the most effective of all of these, and in this case, if you allow your opponents to execute this, you will almost never save it. It is so hard to defend. This is the infield pass, and the thought behind it is really simple. You basically have a team in midfield, and you throw the ball at them. <laughs> it's not that complicated. So let's say you're going up for a solo play, or maybe you just have the ball in the air, or maybe you're dribbling down the field. Whatever it takes for you to get that ball midfield, and hopefully your opponent has sort of indicated to you that they're wanting you to pass it by sort of positioning themselves. Honestly, there's nothing better than being that person who is positioning themselves in the middle and you just see, you see that that car on the side of the field has recognized you and they flick it over or hit it over or whatever it may be. The skill here really comes from the ability to manipulate the ball from any situation to be able to do what you want it to do. But really the biggest thing is that vision. You should really be looking for your teammates any chance that you get. And even though this play is becoming less effective at the absolute highest levels of the game, AKA RLCS, because defenses are just getting so much better, you will still see this all the time. Like if you really watch RLCS and look for them, you'll see it a lot. And for yourself in your games, if you start seeing your teammates in the middle, get that ball to them as quick as you can. And I'm telling you, your teammates will love you and you will win more games. So this type of pass is really king right now among low to mid ranks. And this is the backboard pass. Oftentimes players that aren't particularly high ranked have issues coming off of the walls, and if you're in one of those ranks, odds are that your teammate is never really gonna be ready for a pass like this anyways, so just slam it off the backboard. And you know, a lot of times players in plat or whatever, they aren't like consistently jumping up and defending backboard shots. Honestly, even at my rank, like it's relatively difficult <laughs> to perfectly read a backboard shot every time. And also at this rank, oftentimes your teammate is already riding your bumper, so you throwing it off the backboard is perfect. And again, odds are they will probably miss it, but hey, it's a shot and an opportunity that you didn't have before. And I will say though, it's kind of risky, especially in twos. If you throw it off the backboard and fly into the goal and your teammate comes up for it, there's a really good chance you're gonna get scored on. But it's pretty awesome when you do pull it off. All right, so this one is one that I like to call the ceiling banger. Once you start climbing in the ranks, people start getting better at defending the backboard from all around and obviously taking the ball around, sort of like looping it around the corner is a, a no-no, it's not gonna work like 
ever, but you still often find yourself like taking the ball up the corner, like you just be there a lot of times. And I figured that this is a really good way to set up a pass. So the one place that isn't being defended in the corner is the ceiling. The ceiling is basically always free. So if you have a teammate down on the ground, anywhere around you, and you wanna get the ball to them without having it basically be in danger of getting defended, just take the ball up and smack it off the ceiling. And then it will like literally come right back down to your teammate. And the nice thing is if you don't commit, like you don't jump off or anything, you just hit it really hard and turn quickly and rotate back, it's a pretty safe play. We're starting to see this a lot more at the highest level, and honestly, even at my rank, I see this all the time. And I really do think this is going to be a large part of the future of high-level passing, simply because of the fact that ceilings are often unguarded. But again, people will probably start guarding the ceilings more if people start using this. Okay, I really like this one, and I like to call this the, oh my god, please don't own goal. Of course, I'm talking about the back pass. What's the best way to keep your opponent from scoring? Well, it's to not let them have the ball, ever. So you want to allow your team to maintain possession of the ball as much as you can. So if you're heading back and you know that your opponent is going to be able to gather the ball before your teammate, just kind of bop it back towards your own teammate. Obviously don't boom it right in their face, that would be stupid, and make sure that they're far enough back that you don't just hit it right by them. I've done this before. But just sort of tap it to them in a safe way, and this is a good way to really throw off that opponent who was trying to go for the ball. Alright, the fifth one can be done strategically, but since you're probably pretty bad at this game, like all of us, you've often probably done this by accident, and it's what I like to call the 50-50 pass. So 50-50s happen constantly in every match that you play, so being able to control them is extremely important. You can't specifically, like, perfectly aim a 50-50, you know, you don't always know where the ball's gonna go, but I've seen this a lot, especially in RLCS. This has sort of replaced the loop around pass. So instead of looping the ball around the corner for your teammate to come in and hit it, players are now going around the corner with the ball and trying to get a 50-50 in front of the goal in hopes that the ball will just sort of bounce out in front of the goal. Obviously, if you're good at 50-50s, if you're somebody like Fireburner, you can do this somewhat consistently. If you're not, the ball's more often than not just going to shoot back like the other side. Really try to get a feel for where you can challenge the ball. Like in this case, you want to be a little more on top of the ball. If you're too far under the ball and your teammate is on top of it, it's just going to go their way. Basically, just simple 50-50 physics works here. If you want to get the ball to squirt out into the middle, you're going to have to win that 50-50. Okay, this one is sort of like the infield pass, but it's a little bit more difficult mechanically. This one happens especially when you're in an opponent's corners. I'm just going to call it the down pass. So it's sort of similar to the ceiling pass. It's accomplishing the same thing. But basically you're pushing into your opponent's half with the ball and you're taking it up the wall. Odds are your buddy is going to be chilling in the middle of the field down below. So being able to pick the ball up off the wall and get it down to your teammate is incredibly useful. This is another one of those ones that sort of gets harder to do when you start to really get into the higher ranks. But you know, even up until like champion and grand champ, this is a really good skill to have and you can pull it off relatively consistently. Now, I don't like this as much as the ceiling banger because the ceiling banger can be done without committing. In this case, you're often flying off of the wall to do this. So a little more high risk, but if you're in threes, it's a really, really good option. So this last one is my personal favorite. There is no better feeling than when you're just vibing with a teammate and you wreck one of your opponents with one of these awesome pass plays. This is something I like to call the give and go. So basically when you have the ball, throw it over to your teammate and if they're really keen, they'll throw it back to you and you take a shot on goal. Now this can happen multiple ways, like it doesn't have to just be one, two, like just two passes. There's this one clip from Squishy and I believe Leth and Rizzo basically passing the ball back and forth down the field like crazy. <laughs> but this really works because you're moving the ball laterally. That's what makes it so deadly, similar to the infield pass. It's just so hard to defend when the ball is moving sideways because that's not where your opponents are defending. So these are what I would say are currently the most popular and most effective ways to pass in Rocket League. If I forgot one or anything, let us know in the comments below. And yeah, really work on these, especially in game. Try to be more conscious of passing. Again, your teammates will love you and you'll win more games. Being able to pass will literally skyrocket you through the ranks. And if you get really good at it, you'll be able to also read when the defense is doing this. Don't forget to check out my Rocket League course if you haven't already. Link in the description, 30% off if you use code FLUMP. You know the deal. Check it out. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace out.